And now for the midterms minute, a look at the candidates and races that you need to know about, shout about, and support to make sure we have a blue tsunami on November 6th. As we produce this episode, primaries wrapped up in four states, where altogether, 13 Justice Democrats were vying for congressional and gubernatorial nominations. If you're kicking yourself because you wish you'd taken more action to support progressive and liberal candidates in those primaries, Time to double down. Hawaii's primary is August 11th, and primaries in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Connecticut, and Vermont are on August 14th. Check out the links to our previous spotlights on these states, and then whatever state you live in, take action. Both Justice Democrats and brand new Congress offer get out the vote online calling and texting tools with scripts on individual candidates, allowing you to talk to primary voters from wherever you are. This is a great way to make a real impact. We've included the links to both with tools in the show notes. Today, we're going to talk about Alaska and Wyoming, which both have primaries coming up on August 21st. Although these are states where Democrats, let alone progressives, don't often thrive, there are a few candidates trying to change that this year. Alaska's current governor, former Republican and current independent Bill Walker, and his Democratic lieutenant governor are up for re-election this year. But former Senator Mark Begich, a solid Democrat, threw his hat in the ring, causing Walker to run as a petition candidate. This has created a three-way race that could divide left-leaning voters, and so things may get very ugly as Begich and Walker each try to knock each other out. In July, the expected Republican candidate had a five-point lead on Walker. Begich has the voting record of a relative moderate, but Walker was a former oil and gas lawyer with a long GOP history. Begich's running mate is Deborah Call, an Alaska native and former executive of multiple Alaska native organizations. Unfortunately, all candidates on both sides support the sale of drilling leases in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. As with every race for governor, the importance is that whoever holds the office will be involved in the state's redistricting process following the 2020 census. And although they only have one congressional district, it's important to remember that gerrymandering can affect state-level officeholders as well. Alaska's sole congressional seat is currently being held by anti-woman, anti-environment, anti-LGBT Republican Don Young, the longest-serving member of Congress. The two viable candidates running for the Democratic nomination are both political newcomers. Progressive Democrat Dimitri Sheehan supports improved Medicare for All, investments in renewable energy, and his campaign does not accept corporate PAC contributions. Independent Elise Galvin is a public schools advocate who supports investment in renewable energy and believes responsible natural resource development is possible, though she opposes the Pebble Mine Project. Alaska Democrats have an open primary, but your registration must have been received by July 22nd to participate. Early voting is going on right now, and we've included the link to the early voting locations in the show notes. Mailed ballot requests must be received by August 11th. Absentee ballots must be requested by August 20th, and completed ballots must be received by August 31st. We turn now to Republican-controlled Wyoming, where, believe it or not, the state Democratic Party is feeling optimistic. A few state legislative seats appear likely to swing to the Democrats, and others are at least plausible pickups. Wyoming's current governor, Republican Matt Mead, has reached his term limit, and six climate science-denying GOPers are in a tight primary race for the nomination. But there is a clear frontrunner in the Democratic primary, former state representative Mary Throne. She is the only candidate proposing the absolutely necessary tax increases to resolve Wyoming's deficit after years of cuts by Meade. But unfortunately, she's still pandering to Wyoming's energy sector. Her opponents, Rex Wild and Ken Kastner, both lean more towards renewables. Wild is advocating legalization of marijuana to increase tax revenue and tourism. And again, though Wyoming also only has one congressional district, making it notoriously hard to gerrymander, the governorship will affect state-level races and control over the state's legislature. Wyoming's one congressional seat is held by Liz Cheney, daughter of Dick Cheney. The Democrats eyeing Cheney's seat are Travis Helm and Greg Hunter. Hunter wants to expand Medicaid in the state in the short term and supports Medicare for All as a long-term solution. But this guy is from Wyoming, so when it comes to guns, he only supports more stringent requirements for AR-15s, not any ban of any kind. Hunter used to be a Republican, but switched parties in 2003 after the invasion of Iraq. His opponent, Travis Helm, has a similar political transition story, supports a public universal health care system, and keeping public land under federal control. Wyoming's Senate seat is also up for grabs this year, but Gary Troner is the only Democratic candidate, so he will move on to November. Six Republicans are running for the GOP nomination, even though incumbent Republican John Barrasso is running for re-election. 
So far, 95% of Barrasso's fundraising has come from outside the state. If you're a Wyoming resident, your registration must have been received by August 6 to vote in the primary. However, Wyoming does offer election day registration and voting, so you have another chance. Absentee ballot requests must be made by August 20th, and completed ballots must be received by 7 p.m. on August 21st. We want to emphasize registration cutoff dates and absentee ballot requests and submission dates are different for each state, sometimes even each county. We highly suggest reviewing your state's information and voter ID laws at rockthevote.org as soon as possible to ensure you will be able to vote in both the primary and general elections. Now, we know you heard a lot of names and dates today, but we hope you'll take a moment to check the segment notes, which include all of the links to this information as well as additional resources. And today's Midterms Minute, just like every activism segment we produce, is archived and organized under the Activism tab at bestofleft.com. So if building the bluest of blue waves is important to you, be sure to hit the share buttons to spread the word about supporting progressive candidates across the country via social media so that others in your network can spread the word too.